granny units or extra units or whatever. The affordable housing side of having an extra unit in your house versus getting more money as an Airbnb. Um, so how do you stand on that? And how so, are you solve that? <laughs> so definitely, if we're going to reduce fees, then they should not be able to Airbnb it. So um, if you're going to divide a house um, and we're going to give a break on the 20000 fee that it costs to do a grand unit, then I think, that, I think that it's written into some ordinances that you have to stay 30 days or longer is how they put that in the ordinance and that kind of excludes most Airbnb situations. Um, Airbnb, I know there are some around Sebastopol. I um, hope that they all have business licenses. It is a business and I think they need to pay their TOT tax and somebody needs to be talk, knocking on their door. Um, I talked to somebody that does an Airbnb at Peace Town and he said that the system's not set up to collect the taxes, but it is in two other states. It's just not set up in California. So that should definitely change. But I also have a friend out of the river that does an Airbnb, and it's the only way she was able to hold on to her house. So uh, as long as it's owner occupied and they're paying their fair share and they don't have reduced fees, I generally think there's a place for it. Thanks, Michael? Definitely agree with what Lisa said. I think that, that everything that she had said has merit. Uh, I do know that there are Airbnbs that are happening in the city that are not um, paying their TOT tax and are not registered with the city. And it's not that difficult of a process to do. I think I talked to Kenny about it, and he said that there are a few that are, are currently in the process of, of becoming permanent. I think with regard to um, that we also need to, well, first of all, to determine whether um, they're actually renting their second union, uh, their second unit to a proposed renter or a Airbnb, they have to advertise somewhere. So we could definitely find out if they're advertising and doing it as opposed to um, uh, if they're renting and saying that they're renting and then doing an Airbnb instead. And I think that we should apply to the moral compass of, of our community and just ask that for honesty amongst our citizens. And I don't think that that would be uh, above and beyond what uh, our citizens would be willing to stand up to. Thanks, Michael. Craig? Thank you. And I fully support what Nisa said, especially you know paying attention to the balance that it did save a number of people from losing their home. Uh, but as someone with a family of five in a townhouse, <coughs> I understand the need for affordable housing and stretching a little bit, you know. So it's it's um, there's a bigger issue too that we have to look at as we deep restrict affordable housing projects. When I was on the council and approving too, we got 59 years deep restricted. That's 59 years. If we're leveraging resources, if we're waiving fees in exchange for not converting homes, you know, second units to Airbnb, if we're engaging in things like that, if we're trying to make sure people are paying their TOT, as they should, if they're in Airbnb, we have to oversee that. Where does that sit? That's a, I think staff's gonna have to wrestle with that because that's a lot of work to oversee that, to oversee the acceleration for more affordable housing. Thank you, Craig. Hi, Jonathan. Um, when, when we speak, Craig, of the, when I spoke of the notion of a variance, uh, that, that, that people do something and they get something, um, that is true. That 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 is that is for the purpose of rentals, and that if you and that these rentals cannot be small rentals, couldn't be turned over to an Airbnb type of, of basis. So you know it's it's for a specific purpose of to add to the rental housing stock. That being said, I did go away for three weeks last summer, um, and I I really wanted to rent my house to help pay my mortgage because I took my kids you know, on a camping family trip. Um, and I wasn't able to do it. The city has some very good requirements. There really are very few places in the city that are doing Airbnb. I understand that and I think it's good to keep the community, you don't want people changing every day or every two days. That being said, I think people should be able to sublease, you know, once a year for a few weeks, you know, two, three, four weeks to help us pay because many of us are moderate income and, and could use the income but not the daily Airbnb sort of shuffle. Thanks, John.